Here we are in part three. So we're gonna continue with number 10 on the test two review. This says the adjacent graph, this graph here, is obtained from the graph of the absolute value of x, which explains the V shape, or the square root of x. Oops, well then I gave it away. <laughs> because the square root of x looks like this, and the absolute value of x looks like that. And which one of these two does this look like? It looks like the V shape, which means mine looks like this, okay? So number one says it is the graph of what? It's the graph of this one, okay? And it is translated, it's supposed to be here, so obviously that little peak moved over I can't tell. Yeah, it moved over that way. So it shifted one unit to the left, and then it reflected across which axes? It reflected across, since it's going downward, it actually reflected across the X axes. And then what else did it do? And then it moved, so if I reflect it down, or shifted it over here, it would look like this. Then if it reflects across the X axes, now it looks like that. But it's also moved up one, two, three, four, five, six units. So it's shifted up six units. Um, and so then I'm guessing here you have to type in number two, it asks you for the x axis. And then it tells you to write your equation, okay? So for my equation, I'm gonna have the absolute value of x. And I think I need a little bit longer line here. Um, to the left means I'm gonna do x minus one inside the bars. Translating it up means I'm gonna do plus six outside the bars. And then if it's reflected across the x-axis, that means I need to put a negative in the very front. Okay, now here, and if I had to do this, I think the problem on the test, it doesn't require you to show work because you would just be looking at what happened and then you're basically thinking about this in your head. You could write it down if you want to. It's not gonna get counted against you. You could write down what's happening and then it's just a matter of putting it into the equation the way it's supposed to go. So knowing that if it's going to the left, um, actually if it's going to the left, I made a mistake, it should be plus one. When it goes to the right, that's when it's minus. So keep those notes in your head or Write them down on your note sheet about all the different things that are happening, right? So if it's plus on the inside, that means left. If it's minus on the inside, that means go to the right. If there's a negative in the outside, that means um, it makes basically makes it go downward, right? Um, it reflects it downward. And then if you have something on the outside, it goes up. And if you have something minus on the outside, it goes down that many units, okay? So, or you could say downward or flips, flips downward, something like that, okay? It's good to have those handy. And put it in words that you understand, right? I mean, the way that the book did it was way more lengthy in words, but for me, this makes sense to me, and so this is the way I would write it on my note sheet. But you write it on your note sheet however it makes sense to you. What I don't want you to do is get used to just writing down this one example because many things can change. What's happening can change, right? Which is gonna affect all of this. And then even the basic function can change. What if it wasn't a square root? What if it wasn't an absolute value? What if it was a squared function? Or what if it was one of those cubic functions? It could be anything, okay? So you really have to get used to um, what is the basic function here And then what is happening on the inside? What is happening on the outside? And is it gonna require a negative because it flipped downward, right? Um, so definitely have a good note sheet when it comes to the transformations of graphs. Now we're gonna get into one of the other sections of the chapter two, and that is the algebra of the functions. So they give us a function f, 7x plus 2, and they give us a function g, 4x minus 5, and they want us to add them, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. And then they want us to give them the domain of each one. So when I'm adding, basically I need to take f of x plus g of x. 
which in this case means 7x plus 2 plus 4x minus 5. Now there's no exponents to, to multiply out. There's no coefficient here, so this parentheses is not necessary. Here, it's a positive one, and if I distribute a positive one, I still have positive four x, and I still have negative five. And then if I combine my like terms, I actually end up with 11 x minus three. Now for the subtraction, we're gonna have f of x minus g of x, which means 7x plus 2 minus 4x minus 5. And it's important you use these parentheses because if you don't, your, very, your constant term will come out wrong. So nothing in front, no, no exponent. That can go away. No exponent, but you do have a negative 1. So you get negative 4x and a positive 5. Now if you didn't put these parentheses here, it would look like minus 4 minus 5. And then you'd have the wrong value here, and when you combined it with the 2, you would get the wrong answer, right? So if I combine my like terms here, I get this expression. Then now if I multiply, I get, let's see what we get. We get 7x plus 2 times 4x minus 5, which will require me to distribute everything out. So that guy... 28x squared minus 35x, then this guy plus 6x minus 10. I do have some like terms, so I end up with 28x squared minus 41x minus 10. And then now f of x over g of x would give me 7x plus 2. I don't need parentheses here because the bar is going to separate them. And I cannot factor this expression and I cannot factor that expression, so I cannot cancel common factors, which means that is exactly what I'm going to type in the box. Or on the test, you'll be selecting the answer from a multiple choice. Now, the domain of all of these three is the same. It is the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. And since the domain of f, or since f is a line, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. And g is also a line, and the domain is negative infinity to infinity. So what do they have in common? The whole shebang, negative infinity to infinity. So that's going to be your interval for all of the first three. The only one that's different is this one because it has a fraction. So it's still negative infinity to infinity, but you have to remove where g equals zero. So where this guy equals zero. So if I take four x minus five, sorry, playing again, and set it equal to zero, and I add five to both sides, I'll get a positive five. And if I divide by four on both sides, I get five over four. So I need to remove 5 fourths from this interval, which means the domain will be negative infinity to 5 fourths, then pick up on the other side of 5 fourths and go to positive infinity. And that's how you do the domain for these guys. Okay, let's see what we have next. So another example, it just has different functions. I will pause. I have no idea what they're doing out there, but they're being very loud. Okay, maybe that will help with the noise, so let me go here. This one's very similar, except this one's not lines. This is a square and a square, which means these graphs are parabolas. So the domains are still going to be, the domain of f is still going to be negative infinity to infinity. And the domain of g is still going to be negative infinity to infinity. So what do they have in common? Negative infinity to infinity. So I already know these guys' domains. This one's going to have the breakup, right? I don't know how many breakups it's going to have. So let's wait on that one, okay? Let's go figure this out first. So if I add the two together... So for plus, I'm going to do 3x squared minus 4x 
plus x squared minus x plus 5. If I distribute that, I get positive 1x squared, negative 1x, and positive 5. And if I combine my like terms, I get 4x squared, negative 5x plus 5. And so, um, what do we have here? We have, hmm, we have to minus them now. So then we get 3x squared minus 4x, and then we get minus x squared or minus 1x squared, positive 1x, and negative 5. So if we combine the like terms, we get 2x squared, and then we get negative 3x, and then the minus 5. Now for the next one, we gotta multiply them together. And so then we're gonna distribute the three x squared first. So we get three x to the fourth minus three x to the third plus 15 x squared. And then we get negative four x cubed, positive four x squared and negative 20 x. And then that's it. So I've already distributed. So let me combine my like terms. I have three x to the fourth all alone. These guys make negative seven x cubed. These guys make um, 19 x squared. And then you have the minus 20 x. So this one's kind of long. I'm gonna try to squish it in there as much as possible, but I don't think it's going to fit in that box. So I'm just going to keep going up here. Now f over g means I'm gonna have this guy over this guy, okay? Now you could try to factor it, but if I do common factor up top, this is a trinomial, so if I factor that, I actually get minus three. Oh no, I can't factor that. So that won't factor. There's no factors of five that will give me one, that will add to give me one. So that's not gonna work. So you can't reduce it, just leave it alone, okay? Um, but, so even though I can't reduce it, I do have to figure out, I'm gonna write that in there as my fraction, as my answer for this part, because it cannot reduce. But for the um, domain, we have to figure out where this guy equals zero and if it does equal zero. And since I can't factor that easily, I tried and I couldn't do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus four AC all over two times A. So that becomes positive one plus or minus a negative 19 over two. Remember, the negative would come out as an I, okay? I's are not gonna show up on our graph, which means this means there's no break in domain. If you get an I there, then there's no actual number that's gonna chop up my domain. So in this case, the domain is still gonna be negative infinity to infinity. Make sure you're showing how you're getting that. So make sure you're indicating that those are the two domains. That's why these three are that. And then show that you're setting your denominator equal to zero so that you're explaining how you get this domain here for F over G. Now I've got about one minute. I might be able to squeeze that in. If I go over a minute, it won't be so bad. So let's try this one. This one means f of two plus g of two. So what is f of two? The blue one is f. So I'm gonna go to the x value two and I'm gonna come up until I hit the graph of f. And that y value is four. 
for g of 2, x value is still 2, but now I'm going toward the g function and finding its y value, which is a negative 1. And if I add those together, I actually end up with positive 3. Now for the next one, f of 1 minus g of 1. So now the x value is 1, I'm going to go to f, and that y value is 1. Then x value is 1, but go to g, and we get a negative 2. This actually becomes 1 plus 2, which is also 3. Next, we're going to do f of 0 times g of 0. So here's 0 and x, and I'm already on the graph of f, and that y value at this spot is 0 times, and then um, 0, but I'm going to go down to g, and I get negative 3. But 0 times negative 3 is just 0. Finally, we're going to do f of 1 over g of 1. Now, I've already found the values for f of 1 and g of 1. Um, but if not, you can always go back to the graph. 1 would be the y value of 1. When x is 1, the g value would be negative 2. So this becomes a negative 1 half. If the bottom is 0, then you would select that f over g of 1 is undefined. So did that in about two minutes, which is not too, too bad. But we're going to stop here and then go to another part.